So far this week, we've examined how much you already rely on artificial intelligence and the ongoing efforts to make sure AI is equitable. And tonight, we learn how AI is being used to combat a global threat now, climate change. Lynn Bowie has the latest. Sea levels are rising due to the effects of global warming, posing a serious threat to coastal life around the world. Flooding becomes more frequent and storms become more intense. The Chesapeake Bay is one of the most vulnerable regions in the nation. It's very, very urgent. Um, there is a society of concerned scientists that has done a study where they have seen many of the communities getting impacted by 2035 even. Dr. Vandana Janeja from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County is the director of IHARP, a research institute studying the polar regions. IHARP is funded by the National Science Foundation. It brings together more than 75 scientists, researchers, and collaborators from more than 20 organizations, including nine universities. But it's based here at UMBC. Our future will be different. We can't go back to the past, especially when it comes to sea level rise. It's, we can't regrow these ice sheets, but we can slow down how far they're melting, and that will buy us time. Polar scientists are working side by side with artificial intelligence specialists to forecast changes in the Arctic and Antarctic and answer key questions about sea level rise. Many times we see AI as this solution for everything, but how we use it will make the impact. Much like any other technology, you know, the better we understand the technology, the better data we can create for it and better we can train ourselves to understand it. IHARP is using artificial intelligence and machine learning to process huge volumes of real-world data collected over the course of decades. I'll give you an example, like how many pictures do you have on your phone? If you had to find a picture of yourself on a beach from two years ago, you wouldn't be able to do that. Now, multiply that by thousands of times. That's the kind of data we have. So we're talking about loads of volume but also variety complexity so you can imagine that it's like picking a needle in a haystack but now your haystack is thousands of kilometers wide more reliable projections will help policymakers make better informed decisions as we work to build global solutions it may appear like we are far away from the poles but the ice melting there will actually end up in your backyard lynn Bowie reporting for wjz when, wow. you, when you think you know something, <laughs> you realize how little you actually know. Let me tell you, in just the three days we've had this series, I have learned so much sure. already. It's been fascinating. No question at all.